Good evening, everyone. My name is Sumishwar. I welcome all of you on behalf of our coupling organization to Yog Vashishta sessions in the evening. Namaste, Sumishwar. Aap sabhi ka Art of Thing Sansta ki taraf se Yog Vashishta ke sayan kaal ke sabta mein swagat karta ho. Aaj hum log day 69, unattarve satra mein hum log pohut chuke hai. Roj ki tarah aaj ke satra ki bhi shuruwaat om ki anat se karte hai. Today we are on day 69th session, the way we do it every single day. Let's begin our session by chanting Om three times. Let's all close our eyes. Aakye ban kar le. अपना पूरा ध्यान अपनी सांस के ऊपर ले आए ब्रिंग योर अटेंशन योर बैक एक साधारण सांस अंदर ले ब्रेथ इन एंड लेट गो टेक वन मोर डीप ब्रेथ एंड एज यू ब्रीद आउट ड्रॉप ऑल योर पास्ट एंड कम बैक टू द प्रेजेंट मोमेंट Let us welcome this moment by chanting Om. Take a deep breath in. Om. Let us awaken the divinity within Guru ka awahan kar le. Awahanam. गुरु वंदना कर ले गुरु ब्रह्मा गुरु विष्णु गुरु देव महेश्वरा गुरु साक्षात 
ब्रह्म तस्म श्री गुरव नम तस्म श्री श्री गुरव नम गुरु से प्रार्थना कर ले अपने मुख से निकले वाले हर एक शब्द हर एक वाणी अपने सारे कम एवं विचार अपने बुद्धि के अंदर जागृत होने वाला विवेक अपने स्मृति के अंदर तैयार हो रहे संस्कार और यदि अब भी थोड़ा बहुत भाव बाकी है अहम का तो वह भी और यह सारे भी गुरु की प्रेरणा से ही प्रेरित हो ऐसी प्रार्थना करे मुक्ति और मोक्ष की राह पे चलने वाले हम लोग यदि गुरु कृपा से इसी क्षण जीवन मुक्ति का अनुभव कर ले तो यह उर्वरित जीवन और यह किसी कारणवश आना भी पड़े भक्ति के लिए सेवा के लिए इस ज्ञान को फैलाने के लिए तो वह भी गुरु की प्रेरणा से ही प्रेरित हो ऐसी प्रार्थना कर ले अपने भीतर और बाहर गुरु का सानिध्य महसूस करते हुए धीरे धीरे अपनी प्यारी सी आंखें खोल सकते हो स्लोली एंड ग्रेजुअली यू मे ओपन योर आईज जय गुरुदेव सो so, अपने सारे जूम के पार्टिसिपेंट अपने सारे यूट्यूब के व्यूवर्स और अपने सारे फेसबुक के व्यूवर्स इन सभी का भी आज के इस सत्र में स्वागत है तो सत्र को आगे बढ़ाते हैं हम आज प्रहलाद करके एक बहुत ही फेमस कैरेक्टर बोलिए एक संत के रूप में देखिए एक दैत्य के रूप में देखिए फेमस है कई सारे लोग भक्त प्रहलाद के नाम से इन्हें जानते हैं तो जो आज के जो योग वशिष्ठ में जो वशिष्ठ मुनि प्रभु रामचंद्र जी को इनकी कथा यहाँ पे सुनाने जा रहे हैं तो यहाँ पे उनके जो उत्तरार्ध जो बहुत सारा चीज भक्त प्रहलाद के बारे में हमने ऑलरेडी सुना हुआ है उसके अगला भाग माने हिरण्य कश्यप की मौत जब हो जाती है वो नरसिंह अवतार आके उनका वध कर लेते हैं वहां तक सबको स्टोरी पता है उसके बाद में उनके जीवन में क्या होता है वो ज्यादातर लोग नहीं जानते वो उत्तर उनकी कथा मैं पोस्ट हिरण कश्यप वध के बाद क्या होता है वो आज और वो बड़ा इंपॉर्टेंट है वही उनको आत्मज्ञान की तरफ बढ़ाता है तो वही पोर्शन वशिष्ठ मुनि यहाँ पे सुनाते हैं तो देखते है कि किस तरह से आगे बढ़ते हैं वशिष्ठ मुनि सुनाते समय तो बोलते हे राम अब तक जो मैंने चित्त का जो उपश्रम जो है वो करने के लिए अलग अलग प्रकार के किस तरह से विचार अपने मन में जारी रखना है उसके बारे में उस विचारों को लेके ही उस बुद्धि को जागृत करके उस विवेक को जागृत करके उसके अंदर वो प्रज्ञा को जागृत करके अपने मन का नाश करके अलग 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 प्रकार के उपायों से अपने उपशम को हासिल करके अपने उपशम करके अपने ब्रह्म ज्ञान तक हम लोग कैसे पहुंच सकते हैं ये मैंने अनेक कथाओं के हकीकतों के माध्यम से तुम्हें आख्याई का बताते बताते यह सब कुछ स्पष्ट तरीके से बताया किस तरह से हम लोग वह इंद्रियों का उपशम कर लेते हैं तो वेन वी हैव कंट्रोल ओवर योर सेंसेस then that point of time this mind also gets automatically dissolved no it gets dissolved into your self so now these are the multiple things that we have already seen uh, we have seen that how uh, the janak raja just by listening to siddha gita uh, gets into these things then we also seen that how 
the multiple atmagana that has happened in multiple other people's life also now so what is that we also seen that how suddenly with despite of experiencing all the happiness that pleasure uh, from the outer world the bali raja finally gets bored and he gets into that state of his being where he feels that this is not something i am looking for something else something has to be there which is permanent in nature which is going to give me the permanent joy so he also gets out of that and then that is where the uh, his father virochana and his guru shukracharya guides him and he gets into the self realization now we have also seen that how does one gets into this atmagyana by doing the tapasya so we are discussing also what it is in life so there are multiple such things that we have already seen now today i will uh, tell you one more thing one more thing that i happened um, here with uh, someone called as bhakta prahlad so now who was this bhakta prahlad so let's see little bit of background about bhakta prahlad so uh, there was this demon who used to live in the uh, uh, patala means again uh, below the bhuloka below this planet there is a place called patala there used to be uh, living this daitya is a demon called hiranyakashipu now he also he had this son called prahlad and this son used to chant narayan narayan always and he was praying to vishnu and uh, hiranyakashipu used to say that i am the only god and pray and take a uh, do puja and worship of only me and because of that he used to he has controlled over the all the three lokas no swarga lok uh, bhu lok and the patha lok he had control so he used to say only pray to me only now this fellow doesn't uh, seems to listen to him he said no i will sing the glory of the narayan only i will sing narayan narayan he is the ultimate you are not you are still stuck into this ego that you still feel you are the god it's fine to feel that but that should not be making you behave the way you are behaving is tarah se apne pita ji ko wo kathan karte hain and wo apne narayan rayan he can continue to do the chanting of narayan whenever it says something he will chant only narayan rayan now this hiranyakashipu seems to do all the possible um things with vrat uh, pralada no uh, he will make him um, he will throw him uh, on the top of the mountain he will go and put him in the um, uh, burning oil he'll put him in the, all these sorts of things that he tried with bhakt pralada but bhakt pralada did not got affected out of it neither he left his worship towards narayana so one fine day uh, this is how the story goes ahead this is how the things are happen that uh, the hiranyakashipu sister is a holika and she is said that i will do um, magic here i have this boon is that nothing can burn me even the agni and fire cannot burn me so what i'll do i'll sit along with him on the fire and then that is how he will get burned and i will not even hear burn that is what she does and she goes and sit on that burning fire she gets burned but the pralada comes out of it very safe so that is the day when we celebrate the holi no in india we have festival of holi where we burn the holi and celebrate the holi so this is what the thing is that let the bad uh, be burned and let the good always remain out of it that is the uh, concept that's a theory behind uh, celebrating a holi here now the same hiranyakashipu when he crosses all his limit one fine day he goes and he says where is your nana show me if you are worshiping him so much it has to be there somewhere say so sir is he here is it there and he says is it there in this pillar so he said yes absolutely he should be there he is everywhere so he should be there in the pillar also so this hiranyakashipu goes and uh, that pillar and nasi uh, hanuman Uh, Ishnu's avatar, the uh, incarnation of Vishnu, that takes the form of a Narsi avatar, and it has been said that Narsi avatar goes and kills the Hiranyakashipu. 
so that is how the things become that hiranyakashipu is no more there uh, and this narsinga avatar he again goes here and then he keeps on roaring because his head is like a lion and his body is like a human no there, there were these boons were given to hiranyakashipu that neither the uh, animal nor the human can kill him so because of that he takes this avatar incarnation of that hmm? and then he uses his nails to kill so now after that all this responsibility of taking care of all the demons and the daitya and the praja all the people staying in the kingdom of patala on prallada now prallada has to take care of them so now this prallada is already um, praying to lord vishnu in the form of narayana so now one fine day he just go and then he just sit and he thinks that all the time whenever i see this vishnu comes lord vishnu comes and he finishes all the gods whatever it may be this all the demons here daityas here uh, whatever they do whatever they have the boon or not boon he comes and finish them must be something is there something more is there till this point of time i have been praying to narayana narayana I have seen so many miracles as in my life something has to be there now if i have to protect all my kingdom and all the uh, daityas and dhanavas no the demons then i should go and bow down to vishnu so that is what is because he is the one uh, he keeps doing and then he starts chanting om namo narayana om namo narayana now there is a very beautiful that is that is thing uh, has been mentioned here that when he does he does not feel or he does not it is been said here vishtamani tells to rama that if you are going to your any ishwara any devta hmm, be it allah be it jesus be it shiva brahma vishnu whatever shakti whatever the name you call hmm, that being now if you feel you are separate than that that prayer does not reach hmm? that is how between says that you if you see that you are different than that divinity then it, it is not in exalted manner it is still something is there hmm? so here this is what happens to prallada also what prallada does he now thinks imagines that he does not feel that vishnu is somebody different than him no he assumes the form of a vishnu uh, in the mind itself no it's all happening in the mind so in the mind itself he assumes the form of a vishnu and then start worshiping it no so he says that okay now to to my eyes i do not see anything else other than vishnu everywhere i see is only vishnu i see this body is also vishnu everywhere everything all my five senses all my body in all the directions in the space in this entire universe there is nothing else i see only hari hari means another name of vishnu the everywhere wherever you see there is nothing else and this prallada is also just another name of vishnu this prallada is also vishnu only so, so like this uh, it's very descriptive text it is being given in the uh, book that he sees the vishnu who is riding on the uh, his bird that garuda is there no on that eagle he rides on that and then um he is holding all his shankha chakra gada and padma you know, all his lotus all his weapons and uh, uh, sconch also he is there shankha is also there so all these things he is holding and his color is like blue you no know, just like uh, akash space is like you no know, all these things you no know, very descriptive um, varan and description is being given about lord so now everywhere wherever i see uh, either in the form of gods or in the brahma indra hmm, agni everywhere wherever i see i see that they are all singing the glory of this vishnu alone hmm? so that that being which is free from all the happiness and sorrow that being which is free from any dwan uh, dwan means that there is something conflict going on he is free from that conflict no so and this entire uh, tribhuvan tribhuvan is all the three lokas no 
this heaven and the uh, earth planet and the pathaloka three lokas all they are uh, there in his body in his stomach itself everything is there no so this whole backbone of this entire universe is that he is there everywhere he is the backbone no so he is able to remove all the ignorance no such an and such an infinite swarupa such an infinite shape of that is nothing but lord vishnu and i bow down to that tatva now he is including himself assuming himself as vishnu and then he is saying now i bow down to vishnu i bow down to myself so like this he continues to pray to him so he assumes the form of vishnu and he performs the manas puja so in the mind only he is doing everything so he, he collects all the um, required things to be done uh, for the puja he collects all that in the mind itself he offers all the prayers you know he sings the glories of the vishnu all that happens and that is how he sees himself as vishnu and he continue to do this puja many a times when we see that gurudev is performing rudram and then he will offer the things to on the shiva pindi that uh, symbolic shiva you no know, shiva pindi is there on that and then he will put it on his head also you no know? so this we are also exactly that shiva swarup you no know? there is no difference between the jiva and shiva the jiva and shiva you self and the ishwar and the guru they are not different they are same having this kind of realization no i mean this thought in your puja we will put it in the excel form now you see now the difference here we seen today that there was a uh, his father hiranyakashipu he also used to say i am god pray to me alone and now here we have an vishnu um, prala who thinks that i am also vishnu i am also there everywhere but the difference between them there is no iota of that hiranyakashipu had an iota of i i i pray to me only and here there is an iota that other than me there is nothing else that exists i am that vishnu huh? there is a very politeness there and there is offer of pray, prayers are there there is no i involved here hmm? it's just that that thing exists so that is the fundamental difference we can see between the when prallada says that i am the vishnu and when krishna says pray to only me there is no other way and when say jiji uh, also says the same thing so we see in all this they say that you are, i am the only way so why they do mean that because other than them there is nothing else that exists so no, there is nothing else that exists so what is it that you are just calling that with different names but other than that there is nothing else that they say pray to only me i am the only way there is no other way to you everywhere you will find the same thing it's very common hmm? so that is what he does and then he performs the manas puja now after performing this manas puja then he comes out of his and then he also performs the bahya puja also because then other has to see other has to also experience the same thing so he prepares the idol of vishnu in his um uh, that palace and he will uh, prepare a temple and um, do the prana pratishta of that murti vishnu's murti and then he continue to pray that no he the, uh, take this anusandhan a daily practice that he will go and pray to lord vishnu now it is also seen that uh, if the raja does something if the king does something obviously there all the other uh, people in the kingdom they will also start following saying they also start doing the puja of vishnu they also start saying om namo narayana om namo narayana now looking at this this thing continues and all the gods look at it what's going on all these people this daityas darvas hmm, demons whole their life they have been hating vishnu like anything they have been all running after us what is that they are doing how come this is possible no they get all these things and they start discussing among themselves but they do not get any root cause behind it so they go and meet vishnu himself no he is there in the shir sagar they go and meet vishnu and pray to vishnu yeah kindly guide us what is this going on we we uh, we have a fear in our mind what is that now they will attend the highest and then they will trouble us 
So like this, they are there. So they say, Bhagavan, how miraculous this is, no? It is wonder, so much wonder we are seeing in this. How come these people uh, are getting into all these things? And how come they have started doing your puja and all these things? So they express themselves. They express also the worry that if we have to keep that balance in this universe, the one which is there as per the niyati, as per the guna dharma, they are supposed to do that thing always. You know, they, the fire is supposed to do its work. Water is supposed to do its work. You know? Likewise, the devas are supposed to do their work. The devas are supposed to do their, their work. right? So like that, they should be doing so. All these things should be there. So listening to all that, uh, Vishnu tells them that do not worry. See, he is doing the, um, this puja. Uh, that does not mean that he has already uh, have that thought process. He has already attained something and he has lost that interest in the worldly matter. So despite of he is doing and even if he attains something in it, he is not going to come and trouble you. He, this is his last birth and in this life itself he is going to get liberated. So don't worry, do not worry about this thing that he will come and he will trouble you. No? Like this, he gives the promise and then he disappears. So now they also go back to their own uh, place and they also start doing because now the God has given, the Vishnu have given and um, assurance to them. But here, when this uh, Pralada, what is happening with him? No? So he is uh, uh, continuously doing this thing, these practices he continues to do, all the other people also do. And then he is now, uh, his mind, his body and all these things, whatever he happens with these things, he always will surrender that, no? He will just do, surrender that to the um, Lord Vishnu, to the Ishwar. So like this, slowly and gradually, because of these practices, you know, his hearts become very pure, that Vivika, that power of discrimination arises in him, that Pragya arises in him, you know, his mind becomes calm, he becomes happy, you know, it gives him happiness, joy, he gets into the Vairagya, dispassion also arises in you know, so all these divine qualities that starts arising in him because he's continuing to do this. Then also that other things which are there in this attractions of the outer world, it does not get entangled into it. No? So like this, uh, all these things starts happening to him and then other things also reading to the Shastra, uh, then uh, going through uh, other, than, uh, other than discussing about the knowledge, he does not show any interest in doing any gossip. No? He doesn't take any interest in all these gossips and entertainment and all these other things that people usually get entangled into it. He doesn't get anything. What are the things that he chitta and the outward um, senses and its pleasure? That also, uh, he does not take any interest in doing that also in life. So this is what happens to him. And uh, like this, the... Uh, one fine day, looking at all these things, Vishnu gets um, pleased with all these things and he comes and um, gives him the darshan. So he appears in front of him. So by looking at Vishnu, he praises the Lord Vishnu. No, there are eight different shlokas are there. I am not going to go through each and every shloka here. It's available on page number 298 of this book. No? Subodhya Yoga Shishta on this book, page number 298. Uh, all the eight shlokas are given. So he um, um, expresses his gratitude towards the Lord Vishnu. And then um, listening to this, now when uh, Vishnu, um, Lord Vishnu asks him, okay, fine, um, I'm very pleased. You ask, kindly ask me some Vardana. No? I will be happy to give you that, to some boon. So he says that you are the one, you know everything. What is it that I will ask? There is nothing that I see I need in this life now. I, other than you, you are the only one. I want to attain you. So you suggest what is that I should be as a boon. Whatever you think is appropriate, you please grant that boon to me. So now here Vishnu is saying, um, hey, Nishpap Pralada means, hey, innocent Pralada, such a beautiful thing, such a 
highest uh, faith and shraddha that gratitude you have towards me i give i give you the boon let that thought arise in you which will make you attain the highest because it's the thought it is that atma gyan it is the knowledge about self will make you become self realization of self and then you will become free you will attain the liberation you will become you know? so that is what should come into you so now this is very beautiful huh? so now he gets that thing now that swayam now the vishnu himself have given this boon means something has to be there now let me start beginning myself on this thought process now because uh, if he uh, he starts thinking like this then who am i because this is a thought process now it's a self inquiry so now that he starts with uh, his thought process with the self inquiry that who am i why am i here what is my relation uh, to this universe no all these things let me start contemplating on so he continued to contemplate on this that i am here i stay on this planet called earth prithvi um, i stay in in this palace then i go outward i speak i go wander here and there then all these things i uh, do certain things to even please my senses all these things whatever is there and then to make that happen i put my effort and earn that No, all the bogus amulets, all the pleasures, things I um, earn that, and then, uh, and then I consume that means I um, experience the pleasure out of temporary pleasure out of it. Who is that? Who is experiencing this? Who is that? What is what is my form? Is how do I look? Do do I do I have any form? Who is the one? Who is the experience here? What is what is it that? now i do understand that whatever the things that trees i see here whatever the outward um, stones and uh, grass everything whatever there i see here this outward world jagat this universe obviously can i say that i am only that is that only thing that i can say that i am only that or am i something else and that like this he continues to do contemplation and now now he start realizing certain things the first thing that he realized that he is not just this body and he is not just this five senses which perceives the thing so then he says that um whatever the book i can out of my mother's home i came out i was so dependent on other things i was dependent on this prana vayu hmm, with this breath which comes in and out no even to express myself so can i say that this body alone is the ultimate so he realized no i don't think so i am not just this body there has to be something else then he say okay i experience all this world through my five senses hmm? so all the five senses whatever i experience be it your speaking be it your listening be it uh, the touch feeling of it be it the taste that way what you have hmm? all this there be it the sight that we see all these things whatever i perceive um, how can it be only that no i i guess definitely there is someone who is experiencing through this five senses some something so definitely i am not just this body and i am not just this five senses and it's associated to then after thinking that if i think about my mind if i think about my intellect and if i think about my ego and if i think about my chitta no the memory this all these things then i it appears the things associated the vrittis no the tendencies associated with all these things also seems to be a continuous constantly changing no uh, everything is constantly changing and then they create also and that also disappears so i do i don't think i am just only this also i, I, I it has to be something else other than so this thing when i drop all these things no applying the principles of neti neti means i am not this i am not this i am not this ask yourself question who am i whatever the answer comes to your mind you say that no i am not that i am not just that i am that also but not just that i am something else other than that also like you contemplate that and then once you become vishayarit means you have uh, drop all these um, activity of your five senses you have become free from that then you have gone beyond your mind you have completely become peaceful and then you also drop this five senses and the associated limitations of that 
once you go and experience that you are different than all the things that um bhed bhed means a different different things that we see you know this is good this is bad this is this thing this is that thing in all the forms and all that i am even different than that that and then he says that okay i i am getting that now and that sarva bodha atma so i am that atma i am that brahman i am that shiva so now he contemplate on that and continues to contemplate on this and then he realized that whatever the drashta darshan and whatever the drashta means the observer the ultimate observer the scenery that we observe and the process of observation is darshan all that is our me no the brahma vishnu mahesh all the tilokyana no so all the these three different symbolic energies even i am also that Hmm? then every chara chara means everywhere in the universe whatever i see either it is moving or it is stationary that also stavar and jagam i am that only what are the experience that pleasure that happiness that experience everywhere the ocean of happiness that i experience that also i am also that no there is no this brahma there is no this illusion of i that only I. is there that is not there i am experiencing that and that sat the chit that truth which remains always truth it doesn't change hmm? i am that sat chit i am that ananda i am that happiness which is ultimate in nature i am that i am beyond this janma mrityu and that no so this i am beyond this i am the one this body gets um, old but i am the one which always remains that young chaitanya no without having getting affected of this i don't have any birth i don't have any death i am that aj amar i am immortal i am aj everywhere nobody else other than me alone no like this that paramananda means like that exalted uh, bliss uh, full state is what i am i am experiencing that and that is nothing but that is the i that is the shuddha chinmatra and that is the sarvashesh this bliss that i am experiencing right now He is the ultimate. He is the highest in nature. That is what he, through the thought process, because that is what the boon he got through the thought process, he attained this self-realization, and then he continues to do that. We will see today. It was chapter number fifty-one. Now, katha number one, Prahlad katha number one. There will be more kathas of that. We'll see that tomorrow. So, with that, I would like to conclude this session. There are multiple takeaways which are there. Let us discuss that. and uh, if you have any question related to this we can uh, discuss on that also over to you all okay good day unmute option is been made open to you so you can unmute yourself and you can share here yeah jai gurudev ji ji jai gurudev so uh, i would just like to um, share what i have uh, understood from the story of pralada uh, he was actually the lord of the demons who became a spiritual adept by his own intuition his father hiryanshu was a very uh, proud arrogant and uh, aggressive kind of demon and he uh, collected a lot of possessions and uh, subsequently he was killed and when he was uh, killed then pralada had to take over the um, kingdom of the demons so uh, what happened was uh, uh, pralada used to worship uh, lord hari in a in the form of i mean who was in the form of uh, narayana and um, he used he made a form of that and worshiped him and actually that was like vishnu now he uh, he, he uh, uh, chose vishnu because vishnu is the protector of the universe and he upholds everything and he wanted to be protected and uh, therefore um he thought this is the best way of safeguarding his kingdom and uh, all his um, other asuras because they were defeated by the gods they were defeated by narasimha so therefore he felt that if he worships him he becomes one with them and therefore that one cannot do any harm to him because they are the same there is no duality so this concept of duality and uh, rather non duality is brought out very well where he starts worshiping vishnu 
and he becomes like him and he follows all the rites and rituals. And uh, as, um, when he does this, his uh, other people in the kingdom, seeing their king worshipping uh, Vishnu, they also started worshipping Vishnu. And uh, they were, uh, they became like very true and faithful followers. When the, uh, some of the gods noticed this, they could not believe that their enemies have started worshipping Vishnu. So therefore, they went and approached Vishnu and said, look, this is what is happening, that the enemies have started worshipping you. And he said, no, there's nothing to worry about it. This is Prahlada's last, last incarnation. And uh, after that, he will be liberated. So the, the um, takeaway from this is even those who, uh, have, who do not worship Vishnu, at some point of time in their life or after many lives, they also will come to realize what is Vishnu and they will also worship those gods that need to be uh, worshipped. Then uh, subsequently, um, uh, an un they say that an uh, unworthy man become becoming notorious is doubtless a step to being a better being that and blessedness. That means if a person who was not worthy, but now he becomes worthy, it is a very good step. Like in this instance, many of the demons started worshipping Vishnu. It is very good. But if a person who was worthy, he goes back, then that is not good at all. If he starts, uh, you know, doing something that he shouldn't do. So in this way, seeing a Pralada's devotion, uh, uh, Vishnu comes to him. In, in the form of the deity that he has built in the palace. So this tells us also, if we have enough of devotion and if we have that, uh, you know, trust and we believe, then definitely they the Lord will be with us. So then um, the Lord tells him, tell me what it is that I can give you. Like what boon would you like? So then the Lords are willing to fulfill our um, needs. And then Pralada says, like, I don't know, you should tell me what is it that I need. So it is like when we say uh, we think we should ask God for this and that. But actually, God knows better what we want. Right. And he is in a better position. So it's like we should say, like, thy will be done. Whatever you think is right, you give it to me. So this is very well uh, shown in this story. And then... Um, Vishnu uh, gives him uh, the boon of self-inquiry. And he says, with this self-inquiry, you will be able to reach the highest and get the uh, blessings, the fruit of that action. So um, Pralada starts his self-inquiry and says, I'm not this, I'm not that. Even if anything happens to my body, the self still remains. So in this way, like he... Uh, he takes on the self-inquiry for a very long time and he goes into a deep meditation. Meanwhile, his other demons are continuing to do whatever they are supposed to do, but they are not um, uh, doing it in the way that demons are supposed to do. Okay, so therefore, demon has their own, uh, what shall I say, karma to fulfill, which is different from the gods. Their karma is also different. and. Uh, so that is like the, what has happened so far in the story, what I could understand. Yeah. Jai Gurudev. Jai Gurudev, Jai Gurudev. What is a wonderful recap of uh, the things and very beautifully you said you know, how these um, things that uh, used to worship that uh, when the Vishnu, Sakshat Vishnu is standing in front of uh, Pralada, what he says, you know better than me. Now, what do I ask? No? So uh, this is exactly what we do when we uh, pray you know, before starting a session. What is it that we ask for? What is it that we pray to the master? Let my existence, all the levels, whatever it may be, all these things, let be inspired by you alone. Because we, the poor, will ask something small here and there. What is it that you want to ask? You decide it for us. No? You, that divinity, you, that master, you, that which is also same like yourself, your antaratma, atma, yourself, and guru and Ishwar. They are not different. And this, what do we pray to it? You decide. Our existence, you decide what is it that you want us to do here. This also, same thing was said by Mutta Prahlad also. 
very beautiful takeaway jinni ji thank you so much for that jai gurudev uh aur kisi ko apne aap ko vyakt karna hai sangeeta ji ari diya sangeeta ji yes um uh, uh, very beautifully jenny has uh, said this story so it, it was a really total a uh, recap i wouldn't go into that i will go a bit so one of the takeaway was is like uh, all the demons they turn into the negative qualities which we have their demon types you know they turn positive that is they start worshiping so that was the first one we said kaam krodh lok mo ahankar which is dragging us down and now taking us upwards that is what i liked it very much that is a one of that and uh, mm, of course uh, then pralada as you just said you know ki uh, he only says to god ki okay now you only give me whatever is required for me so the god says that you have become my devotee and that uh, supreme light you know that uh, destroys the darkness of every kind yeah okay so my uh, if i can just off my video because of the uh, this uh, some connectivity issues are still going on because of the thunderstorm okay then uh, he takes a refuge in the lord so that is very important you know means he surrenders himself totally to the lord that is most important till you don't surrender and he is just going and entering into that witness consciousness just because because he is seeing now this ears are hearing but i am not that this uh, taste buds are tasting but i am not that so in that self inquiry it is going more deeper and deeper to his five senses also and he comes exactly to that point you know he in that witness consciousness he is just entering that that realm of that term and he's he's so uh, he's devoid of all the imaginary imaginary qualities you know whatsoever the sense is that but he now is saying i am pure consciousness and i am peace beyond thought so that is where he is going and he is saying he i am all pervading reality which is devoid of objectivity now again that no division comes here so that individualized consciousness goes and merges into that finite consciousness so that pralada says i am pure consciousness and it is by this consciousness that all the things from nitil pot to the mighty sun all are perceived so he sees himself in that omnipresent where there is no conceptualization and also that self that all the senses and their experiences are made possible for it is the inner light so i just love that part of it and uh, really beautiful how slowly and gradually pralad has been going ahead with this story and the first line of vashish sage vashish is ki o rama i am going to tell you this story which is going to lead you direct to the goal without any obstacles so that was the first line it was so amazing i just liked it that itself and the whole story after that the way you explained someshwar ji is always fantastic we always i enjoy listening to you you know exactly just as you say soham we are also here soham sitting and then we also sit like this and we go and listen to you <laughs> beautifully explained so thank you very much once again and allowing myself to express over here <laughs> jai gurudev fantastic sangeeta ji and a very beauty you know what what i uh, like most in this thing that when he start praying now he doesn't see vishnu as different he says that i am the same thing so i am praying to myself you know that that vishnu is not somewhere sitting somewhere outside is there within me i have taken the form of a vishnu and prime praying to it it is such a wonderful start of prayer that i am not different that advaita has already been there he is already enlightened oh, the rest of this history 
the moment he says that oh, i am the vishnu i am praying to myself khatam he is already into advaita me hai there are no two duality ko khatam hi kar diya na start me then rest is just the happening no just the story but that was it started there no that's really wonderful future is very good Mm-hmm. Sweetie is also listening to us. Would you, would you like to say something? Go ahead. हाँ स्वीटी हिंदी में आप आराम से बिल्कुल हिंदी में भी बात कर सकते हो कि यहाँ पे लैंग्वेज का बंधन ही आप कोई उड़िया फ्रेंच वगैरह जो भी और कोई भी लैंग्वेज आती है ना तो भी चलेगा आप व्यक्त करो अपने आप को ओके गो है यू आर ऑन म्यूट हम लोग नहीं सुन पा रहे अनम्यूट करना पड़ेगा हाँ बोले बोले सी चलो ठीक है एनीबडी एल्स किसी को अपने आप को व्यक्त करना है आप जरूर व्यक्त कर सकते हैं इफ नॉट देन विल पॉज दिस सेशन मनीष जी भोसले सर रोहिणी जी चलो ठीक है तेरा आज के इस सत्र को हम लोग यही पे समापन करते हैं विल पॉज ये सो दैट वी कैन मीट टुमारो जय गुरुदेव